Approximately 1 billion people globally are deficient in vitamin D. Populations most susceptible to vitamin D deficiency are those who reside in nursing homes, hospitalized patients, individuals suffering from obesity, and elderly individuals. However, individuals with higher levels of skin melanin or those who extensively cover their skin also experience a higher incidence of vitamin D deficiency. Each person may experience diff uh, different symptoms associated with vitamin D deficiency. So let's take a look at an example of this. What seems to be the problem today? I'm feeling off. Like I feel like I have no energy when I work out. I'm feeling more fatigue and muscle weakness. And I feel more depressed than usual. Have you been getting enough sleep, exercising regularly, getting enough sunlight? I probably do because we live in San Diego, right? Mm -hmm. But I stay indoors and I do go outside and wear sunscreen. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, you're due for a blood test. So let me schedule that for you right now. And I'll see you in a week. All right. All right. Thank you. Cool. One week later. Okay. So I have the results of your blood test. Um, Everything seems normal, vitamin C, vitamin A. It looks like you're slightly deficient in vitamin D though. So I am gonna prescribe you um, some vitamin D too. Um, other than that, other than being vitamin deficient, everything else seems normal, yeah. So does that explain my symptoms? Um, yeah, vitamin D deficiency has been associated with like depression, muscle pain, muscle fatigue, and honestly just feeling like tired in general. So you should be feeling better in a couple of weeks after you've been taking it regularly. If not, then just come on back in. So how can I increase my vitamin D levels on um, a daily basis? Okay, so first off, I'm gonna give you this little prescription Thank for you. vitamin D. And on a regular basis, you can kind of consume foods such as um, fish or milk, because like they contain a lot of vitamin D. Um, but honestly, to meet that like requirement alone, that's been kind of difficult to maintain with just a good diet. So I obviously recommend you consume the um, prescribed supplements that I'm giving you. And then um, if you do go out in the sun, like obviously wear sunblock, but try not to wear too much so you can absorb more vitamin D because um, sunlight is a really good source of vitamin D in general. Um, but also, yeah, it's like, I don't know, being in the sun is kind of bad for you. So take it as you will. Like I'd say, keep up with your vitamins and um, just take that prescription to the pharmacist and they'll tell you the rest. Yeah, I'll go to the pharmacy next. Cool. Here's my prescription. Okay, I'll be right back with this. Um, okay, so here is your uh, vitamin D um, prescription. So you should uh, take this once a week. It's 50,000 units. Uh, and you take this perfectly with some food. Uh, and after that, uh, you could just get some daily supplements. All right, so just any old supplements like from over the counter is fine? Uh, yeah, those are like 2,000 units, and so you could just take those daily. All right. Okay, good work. Thank you. Moving on from this example, let's take a closer look at vitamin D. Vitamin D is an essential vitamin for humans. It is produced in the skin from sunlight or can be ingested from a variety of foods. Vitamin D is present in the forms of D2 and D3, both of which function similarly but have different side chains. Vitamin D is produced from the breakdown of 7-dehydrocholesterol by sunlight to form pre-D3, which is then converted to D3. The vitamin D is then transported through the circulatory system via DBP so that the body can use the vitamin D to maintain calcium homeostasis. Vitamin D is important for the intestine to absorb calcium efficiently for bone development, and for the kidney to regulate calcium intake into the blood. Despite its essentialness and importance, it is estimated that 42% of the population in the United States is vitamin D deficient. 
vitamin D's crucial role in maintaining these functions is the reason why vitamin D deficiency can be so detrimental to the health of people. Let's take a look at some of the most common symptoms that vitamin D deficiency produces. Say hello to coughs and colds, low mood, seasonal affective disorder, tiredness and fatigue, poor bone and teeth health. These are the vitamin demons. They represent the common symptoms of having low vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is needed to help the body absorb calcium, help maintain healthy bones, as well as aiding the immune system. You can find vitamin D in foods such as oily fish, cheese and eggs. However, you would need to eat two cans of sardines, seven eggs or 12 packs of cheese every day to get the recommended daily amount of vitamin D, which means very few people reach their daily allowance through food alone. Sunlight is the best source of vitamin D. When UVB rays from the sun hit the skin, they are converted into vitamin D. However, due to our use of sunscreen, cloud cover, increasingly indoor lifestyles and UVB rays not being strong enough through October to March, we simply aren't getting enough to maintain healthy levels. It's estimated that one in five adults and one in six children in the UK are low in vitamin D. That's why the government now recommends that everyone in the UK supplements vitamin D during the winter months. And at risk groups, including mums-to-be, infants, the elderly, people with darker skin tones and those with little to no sunlight exposure should supplement all year round. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new about vitamin D.